So it's very rare for uh, any of us to go through life and to be successful at absolutely everything. It's very unusual, I would say practically impossible. Um, the areas that we tend to look at at school is maybe sports, academics, and then maybe physical appearance. You know what I mean? So if you, kind of, if you have those in a school student's mind, they have everything. You know, if you're good at, if, if you're good at academics and good at sport, that's, that's pretty good going. Like someone who can actually nail exams and is actually good out in the sports field as well, that's pretty, you know, hats off and all of that. And then if they happen to, to be able to do that and be fairly attractive as well, like Janie, they kind of have it all, you know? But it's very, it's, be very, it's very unusual to have all of that. But then when things move on uh, in life, I mean, into college and, and, and the work sphere, again, we look at similar, similar things. Uh, you know, are they rich and successful? Uh, have they influence and power? Uh, maybe are they, are, they, are they well known? Are they famous in some way? Uh, but to have that and good looks and money and security and all of these things, uh, it's, it's very, very rare to have everything. And I think uh, as we, we've meditated over the last couple of weeks, the reason the Lord does that, the reason the Lord doesn't tend to give us absolutely everything we want is because he has to keep in mind the big picture, which is, which is of course, getting us into heaven. So if we have everything we want here, so much so that we forget God and don't need God and don't need grace and don't need his help, then we'll be dancing our merry way to somewhere which is not heaven. So there's no point in, in giving us so many things that we forget the giver. So it's helpful for us uh, at times to have these experiences of rejection. You know, when you're all the, in, in primary school or in secondary school, when we're all lined up against the wall and two guys have to pick teams and you're one of the last ones to be picked, or failure at an exam, or failure at a driving test, or you ask a girl out and she says no, or you're madly in love with someone for, for a couple of weeks or months, and, uh, and then you know, they break it off and you're heartbroken, or, or you apply for a, a job and you're unsuccessful, or you know, all of these, these, these kind of failures come our way. And it's so important, the reason I'm saying all this now is the, 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 the theme of, of our Sam today I think it sets us up for, for looking at John the Baptist. But the, the chorus of our psalm was, I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. So Lord, I thank you that I am who I am. And I thank you, Lord, that I am how I am. I think it's, it's, it's greatly underestimated, this, this, this attitude of being grateful for, for who I am. I'm grateful for me. Now, we have to avoid two extremes here. One extreme is that uh, I can just accept the way I am and don't have to work on it, don't have to try and grow in virtue, don't have to try and root out vice, no. So that kind of lazy attitude, oh, it's just the way I am. You know, I get up at midday every day, what can I do? <laughs> you can get up earlier, that's what you can do. Uh, you know, like, there's no point just like, accepting being lazy or accepting being, oh, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to be a little fitter, start running. Um, so, yes, we, we can work on ourselves, we can work on our virtues, we can work on uh, even, even our, our, our bodies if that's what we need. Uh, the other extreme then is, uh, so rather than thinking that we don't have to do anything, we don't have to do anything, is that we have to do everything, that uh, I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect in everything. I have to be perfect, me. And then this takes all this effort and concentration and distraction and stress and worry and fear and anxiety because I have to be perfect. No one said you have to be perfect. Recognizing who we are as God's children and being grateful for who I am as I am, warts and all, is such a gift. It's such a gift that you can look at yourself in the mirror first thing in the morning and say, you're not perfect. But I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. I thank you, Lord, that I am the way I am. Sure, I could be taller, fatter, thinner, stronger, browner, not have peeling noses or whatever it may be. But I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. I thank you that I am the way I am. I thank you for me. I can actually love me and accept me. Again, there are things I need to work on, absolutely. But just because there are some things that need to be worked on doesn't mean we throw out the whole package. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. Because if I don't see any kind of good in myself, how am I going to be a witness to the Lord? 
How am I going to prepare the way uh, for the Lord in anyone's heart if I actually don't like me? You know, if I approach someone, because like this, it will come across. It'll come across in the way we speak about ourselves. It'll come across in even the way we speak about others. Uh, if I don't, if I'm not happy in myself, if, 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 I, if I have no peace in myself, when I go to speak about the Lord, th- th- there won't be much peace in what I say. There might be kind of a, almost like a, a fear. If I'm not happy with me, it's because I focus so much on my failure and negativity and all this kind of thing that God probably doesn't really like me either. So what I have to do is I have to pray lots in order for God to like me. Now I start uh, missioning to, to Ashley. Ashley, you have to pray. You have to pray more. You have to pray more. Because if you don't, God won't really like you. You know, it's, it's going to come across. Whereas if, if I come from this place of peace, Lord, I'm not perfect, but I thank you. I thank you for me. And now with a, a good, solid foundation, a good, healthy understanding and love of myself, a good, healthy understanding uh, and love of God, now I'm, I'm ready to start preparing the way in other people's hearts for the Lord. You know, to make straight, to level the terrain, to take, take away the obstacles, to remove the, 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 the forests and the, to level the hills so that Jesus can come into other hearts. No greater gift can we give someone than the gift of the faith. But if I don't like me, if I don't like myself, if I don't accept myself, it's going to be very, very hard. I would say not impossible to actually prepare the way for the Lord and someone else. So John comes and he does something exceptional, some might, some might say extreme. As one of our community said to me, uh, just deadpan this morning, if you've seen any of the, the series The Chosen, um, in The Chosen, they somewhat tongue in cheek, in, in jest, they call John the Baptist Crazy John, right? Because uh, he lives out in the, in the desert and wears you know, camel skin and he eats locusts and wild honey. It's not exactly a standard diet, even for a Jew. So they call him Crazy John. So one of the community says to me this morning, oh, here it's uh, Crazy John's birthday today. <laughs> took me a while to actually, oh, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, that's what we call him. We call him John the Baptist in the church. We don't call him Crazy John. Okay. Uh, so, but he does something that does appear crazy in the eyes of the world, okay? Uh, he he recognises that, that he would have known that his own birth was, was miraculous. His mom was well beyond childbearing years, and yet the Lord grants them this grace. So what does he do? He goes out into the desert to prepare his own heart, prepare himself for this mission. To prepare himself for this mission of preparing the way for the Lord. So he spends his time in prayer and in sacrifice, uh, preaching, teaching, uh, these precursors to, to baptism, uh, courageously, shamelessly, uh, with absolutely no fear at all of the, the authorities of the time. He preaches the truth. And then when the Lord comes, he says, Behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. I'm not worthy to undo the strap of his sandal so like, just because he would have been fairly well known I would imagine uh, in, in that region it doesn't go to his head he's not like this superstar or anything he knows what his role is his know, his, he knows that his role is to point out who the Lord is and then step back point out who Jesus is and then step back that's a great model also for, for a priest or for a missionary or for music ministry or for parish pastoral councils or anything like that we point out who the lord is and then you step back you get out of the way you if you're there preparing a road i mean you've got diggers and bulldozers and trucks up on the road right when the road is done get your diggers and bulldozers off the road because you're blocking the traffic you know so when we have the way prepared get out of the way so we we have the, the 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 way opened up for the lord then it's not about us get out of the way and let people approach the lord I think that's, that's again, it's such a, a simple but, 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 but a powerful example of John the Baptist. Lead people to the Lord and then. Because it's not about you. And yet, at the same time, we balance that with the fact that I, I thank you, Lord, for the wonder of my being. It's not that I'm getting out of the way because I'm useless and I'm insignificant and just trample me if thou wisheth. No, just your job is done. Next. Next job. Next person. Next family. Next thing to do. There are plenty of people to bring back to the Lord. Work on them. So we ask the Lord today for these two graces. One, that we can honestly in prayer, in adoration and maybe 
strange as it may sound, maybe first thing in the morning in front of a mirror. Look at ourselves and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the wonder of my being. And two, that in, in recognizing that, in recognizing how the Lord has worked in me and what he has given me, may we prepare the way in other people's hearts for the coming of Jesus. Amen.